Hi, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Deborah and I'm a faith-based content creator. I make content sharing all about my journey with God to encourage you on your journey with him. So if that's something that you're interested in, then feel free to subscribe to become a part of this beautiful family that the Lord has created on here, for which I am so extremely grateful. It is such a blessing to have you here. And welcome to a series that I call Faith Talks, where every week I sit down and speak about a topic that the Holy Spirit is leading me to speak about. I share things that I believe can be very helpful on your journey with God. And we just speak about all things faith. This is about faith. This is about walking a journey with God that is rooted in faith. Because I think that life and life to the full and experiencing the true goodness of God is a journey that includes faith, of course, faith in our Heavenly Father. So that is what Faith Talks is all about. And in this week's episode, I want to talk about decision making. And this is a big one. This is a tough one. If you've been watching my video for the past few weeks, you've kind of seen me progress into a decision that I've had to make, which was a very tough one, to be honest, the decision to leave my job. I kind of want to speak about how that process went um, because I've been seeing comments of people asking me, how did you make this decision? How do you know this is the right thing to do? Um, how do you step out in faith? And even when I was on my apartment faith journey, where my whole apartment story is that I stepped out in crazy faith, I did some crazy things, I prepared for the place before I had it, all those things. And even back then, people were like, how were you sure that this was the place? Like, how do you know? How do we know when we make choices, when we make decisions, when we step out in faith that we're doing the right thing? And when we have two choices in front of us, how do we decide which way to go? I think that we're all scared Believers or not, just in life as people, we are scared to make the wrong choice and we're scared to live in the what ifs. So let's talk about these things today. And I want to start off again just by speaking about a little bit the decision that I made to leave my job. I'm going to make a whole video separately about this because it is a step out in faith. Um, I've decided to leave my job and it's something that's been on my heart for a while. If you're my friend, if you're in my friend circle, you know that I've been asking for prayer about this for a while because it's a tough decision to make. I am so grateful for this job. It has been such a blessing because I work part-time hours. I make a full-time salary. I have a lot of free time. The people that I work with are amazing. It's like a family at work. So looking at that choice is like, why would you, why would you ever leave that job? But I think that there's a very secular aspect to my job. It's in a very secular place. And I just kind of had to look at what the Lord is doing in my life right now. And I, this year I've really chosen to, I want to live for God fully. I want to walk a, a life in holiness. And I, that doesn't mean to be perfect because we will never be perfect. I will never be perfect. Our human minds, we are we are corrupted with sin. I will never be perfect, but I do want to make that intentional decision to walk with the Lord. And like the Bible says, um, if your arm is causing you to stumble, chop it off. If your eye is causing you to look at things you're not supposed to look at, pluck it out. <laughs> I know that sounds really extreme and the Bible doesn't mean that literally, but it does mean if there are things in your life that are hindering you from walking in a holy life with the Lord, cut them out. And I guess that's what I know I have to do with my job. But just knowing that doesn't make it easier. It does not make it easier because in the world, this looks like a very foolish decision to make. So let's talk about a few points that have helped me in the making of this decision that you can apply to any decision. And this is for people who intentionally want to walk with the Lord. I want to say that first, because if you don't have a relationship with God, then there won't be weight to the things I'm about to say. It won't matter to you if it um, aligns with the points that I'm about to mention. And I've lived my life like this last year. I've made a lot of decisions without the Lord. I've made a lot of decisions without consulting these things. I made a lot of horrible decisions. I really did. I made a lot of bad choices and I'll come back to that later. Um, but it was not a priority for me to serve the Lord. There's such a big difference 
in making decisions like that and making decisions like this, I promise you, because when the favor of the Lord is on your decision, when you are intentionally seeking God behind your choices, if the favor of the Lord is upon you, who can be against you? If God is for you, who can be against you? So the first thing that I want to say in decision making is to line your decisions up with the Bible. This choice that is right in front of you, if there's two options, for example, Laying your decisions next to the letters of Paul. Paul really encourages us to live a life worthy of Christ, to really walk with the Lord. So look at those letters because Paul really mentions some practical things, some things to flee from. If you look at the decision that you want to make, is there an option that very clearly kind of leads you away from the Lord? And is there an option where it does the opposite? Do these choices both allow you to live a holy life for the Lord? It, are you able to serve God in these choices? And you need to be very honest with this. I think when it comes to making decisions, we are very biased. Deep down, we have a decision that we've already set our hearts on. Let's be honest. In Jeremiah 17 verse 9, it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Our heart is not the best um indicator when it comes to decisions because our hearts are deceitful. We are biased for decisions. This is where prayer comes in to ask the Lord to start working on us to examine the motives of your heart, which he does anyways. That's what the word says. God examines the motives of our heart, okay? But um, just to ask him to reveal to you what your motives are. If there are motives that are selfish, that are not good motives, good roots for the decisions, then Lord, allow me to see that. Reveal to me what it is that I need to see. Prayer is a transformative process, and this is where that happens, to ask God into that decision. Lining your decisions up next to the word of God might instantly eliminate one of your choices. And that is not always the case because sometimes both decisions are opportunities for you to serve the Lord and grow closer to him. And we'll get to that in a second, but sometimes it will instantly, you'll instantly be able to see, you know what, if I'm being honest and if I've spent time in prayer with the Lord, no, this decision is not going to lead me or anyone else closer to God. Then that is a very good indicator that that might not be the best decision for you to make. And that is also something to bring before the Lord in prayer to confirm once you've made that decision of, okay, I'm not going to take this path because Lord, this won't lead me any closer to you. Will you confirm to me that this is the right thing to do? you will get that confirmation. The next thing that I want to say is prayer, which kind of ties into what I just mentioned. Lining our decisions up next to the word of God and involving prayer in that, they're hand in hand. You can't do one without the other. I think just that act of us kind of wrestling with our decisions because we want to make the right decision for God, I truly believe that he delights just in that not not saying that he delights in us struggling, but just us wanting to seek his will and the right thing to do. As a father, he delights in us. And how much more would he delight when he sees us earnestly seeking for the right answer? As a dad, wouldn't he sit there smiling? I always think like Jesus is with you. He watches over you and he delights in you. He smiles at you. He smiles when you're in prayer. Father, will you help me to make the right choice? Of course. Of course he will be there to guide us when we pray earnestly and we wait expectantly on the Lord. That is so important to wait expectantly because when you wait expectantly, you're on the lookout for an answer. If you're not expectant on the Lord to answer your prayer, you're going to miss him speaking. You're going to miss his confirmation. You're going to miss everything. And in a way, that's kind of like praying without faith behind it. I think expectancy really shows faith of like, I've prayed this prayer. Lord, I know you've heard my prayer because God hears every single one of our prayers. And I'm waiting expectantly, Lord. I'm waiting expectantly within the waiting Will you do what you need to do, involving him in everything? The Bible says in John 14, verse 13, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatever we ask for prayer in Jesus' name will be given to us freely, but it does say so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And this is where that prayer comes back of 
expose the motives of my heart because we can think in a decision oh this is serving the lord and this will glorify god but does it really though we as humans are able to justify anything we can say yes this relationship is glorifying god yet we're doing all of these things this friendship this job this move that i'm thinking of making is glorifying the lord when actually we're just justifying something that deep down we know we know that it's not gonna glorify the lord and that is where that shining of the light on our motives comes in where the Lord can truly lead us when we do come to that place of fine maybe this will not glorify you Lord maybe if I'm being honest that's not what it will do it's like okay now we can sit honestly and talk about this decision the next thing is what I mentioned before as well all of these things are so tied in together but it's to ask for confirmation again that verse John 14 verse 13 anything we ask for in Jesus name will be given to us freely when we ask for confirmation and we wait expectantly, the Lord will speak to us a hundred percent. But if you're not waiting expectantly, you're going to miss it. And I've made this example before of when you get a notification that a package is going to be delivered today, it doesn't give you a, a time stamp, but you know it's going to come today. Best believe you're going to be at home expectantly waiting. You're not going to head out to do grocery shopping or to go see your friend. You're going to wait expectantly because you know that this package is coming. And if you're not alert, you're going to miss it. It's like that in prayer as well, praying for confirmation. We have to be expectant. And with that, I do also want to say that for example, in my decision to leave my job, I prayed for confirmation for a long time and I was expectant and it didn't come. I saw other people's testimonies where the Lord had confirmed to them five times that this was the right choice to make, but that confirmation didn't come for me. And that really frustrated me because that nudge to leave my job wasn't going. So I was like, what am I supposed to do then? And I, it got to a point where I was like, I had lined my decision up with the Bible I had truly intentionally prayed about it. And I was like, Lord, I know this is the right thing to do in my pursuit for you. I want to go for you fully. It's like that thing of like chopping off my arm and my eye. I know that this job is being a stumbling block for me in some ways. It's hindering me from living a fully holy life with you or walking towards that. So I was like, this is, this is a decision I need to make. And as soon as I made that choice in my heart, it's not even that I acted upon it yet. I just made it in my heart of, okay, 100%, this is what I'm going to do. That's when the confirmation came. And that leads me to Isaiah 30 verse 21. There it says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. So this verse perfectly describes what I went to where I was standing on this crossroad. I was on the fence and I mentioned this on TikTok. I was on the fence about my decision, but sometimes it's not until we get off of that fence that the confirmation will come. When you're on a crossroad with the navigation on, and you're standing still, that navigation isn't going to tell you anything. It's as soon as you start moving in a direction where it will tell you, okay, keep going, this is the way, or let's do a turn, or let's take a, a different way to get you back on the right path. How can the Lord guide us or confirm things to us sometimes when we're so on the fence? As soon as I made that decision in my heart, that's where the confirmation came. And about confirmation, I want to say something. I spoke to a friend about this, and she mentioned this, which is so true, that you throughout, when you're praying for something like this, for a decision, you have to make sure that you're tuned into the Lord. You need to spend time in the word of God. You have to fast. You have to focus on him because if you're letting in too much noise, if you're letting in the whispers of the enemy, you're going to miss the confirmation because the thing that's loudest to us is the thing that we're most focused on, right? Let's say you're watching TV. When I was a kid, if I was watching TV and I was zoned in on that, my mom could be speaking to me. I wouldn't hear her. But then if I would focus on her voice, the TV would become background noise, right? You need to focus on God within this. Because if you're focused on the TV, on the noise, on the world, on what the world is saying about this decision, you're going to miss the confirmation from the Lord. He can be speaking to you, but you're going to miss it. The confirmation that the Lord will give we can disregard that as nothing. A confirmation that I received, for example, was that one night I woke up with a number in my head, which I never have, and I Googled it, nothing came up. Then I went to that page in my Bible, in the new Bible that I got recently, and the page that it led me to was the blessings of obedience. To me, that's a confirmation. But if I was so focused on everything the world was saying, I could just take that as like a 
kind of coincidence, even though there are no coincidences with God, absolutely not. So I know that that was confirmation from the Lord, but if you're not focused in on his voice, if you're not looking to him, you're going to regard that as like, oh, well, that was just a page in the Bible. Let's keep going. Do you know what I mean? You have to be focused in on the Lord and what he is saying. And then the last thing I want to say in decision making is faith. It is faith. A question that I've been asked quite a few times when it comes to now my job or before the decision about my apartment and how did I know this was the place for me? How do I know that it's the right choice to leave my job? When it comes to decision making and faith, what you need to know, and I heard Priscilla Shire say this in an interview, is that very often when you make a decision in faith, you won't be sure until hindsight, until you look back and you can say, that was the voice of God. That was a confirmation. I think that sometimes we forget that that's the whole thing about faith. It is not being sure. It is not being sure yet believing and placing our trust in God. Um, when I was walking around this apartment like a lunatic, <laughs> following the, the Bible story of um, the Israelites marching around Jericho, how was I sure that I was I was going to get this apartment? I wasn't, but in a way I was because I had faith. I had faith, but faith is the substance of the things not seen. If I had full confirmation that this was my place, where would my faith have been? The same in this decision to leave my job right now. I don't know what's going to come after this. I'm in my last weeks right now, but after that, where's my income going to come from? I don't know. Am I 100% sure that this is the right choice? you can't be sure when it comes to faith. And then I think we can kind of come to this place where we can ask, is there even a right or wrong? Is there even a right decision or a wrong decision when you truly pursue the Lord, when you're in prayer and you make a choice? Looking at the story of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in Daniel, these three Hebrew boys who refused to bow down to this statue, this gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had made because they didn't want to bow down to an idol. They serve God and God alone. These boys had a lot to lose. They had their lives to lose. In decision making, in my decision making, when finances are involved, leaving a relationship, moving to a different country, there's a lot on the line. We have a lot to lose. These boys had their lives to lose. They stood before the king and they said, King, we know that we know that the Lord will deliver us from your hands. But even if he does not, we will not bow down to your statue. We serve God and God alone. They had a lot to lose, but they knew their intentions. They knew that they weren't willing to bow down to this statue because of their intentions to follow the Lord. Even though people around them might've been like, oh, it's just a statue, bow down, bow down so you can save your life. They were like, no, we have to stand firm for the Lord. That choice for the Lord, first of all, that's what they said, right? That God will deliver us. Why would our heavenly father let us fall after we've made a very hard decision for him. Me choosing to leave my job. This is hard for me. Trust me. It's very, very tough because I've never been financially stable. I've never had a job like this that I actually enjoy. To now let it go, that is tough. Why would he let us fall? But even if now I lose everything, if I lose my apartment, if I have to sell all my stuff because I don't have money, I know that I lost everything in my pursuit of the Lord. Does that make sense? Is a wrong choice really a wrong choice if you're making it with the intention to follow God? And is a right choice really a right choice when you make it with the intention to do the opposite? And that then leads me to Romans 8 verse 28. Doesn't the word of God say, doesn't our heavenly father say that he works all things out together for good? When I look at my years in my drift away from God last year, I made a lot of choices without God. I made a lot of decisions that were not that were bad decisions. I'm not going to say wrong decisions, but they were bad. I spent time with people I shouldn't have spent time with. I did things I shouldn't have done. They were bad decisions. But even those choices, aren't those choices now the path that have led me to where I am right now? Hasn't God allowed those decisions also to flourish into something beautiful? Isn't that now a part of my journey. When it comes to making decisions, no matter how it goes, there is no point in saying, what if, what if? Because our lives, the way that they're going, they're the plan A. The Lord already knew we were going to choose this thing. And the last thing that I wanted to say is that maybe in decision making, you have two decisions that both are, line up to the word of God, 
both are amazing opportunities for you to serve him. Um, they're just amazing opportunities for you in your work field or in a move, whatever it is. And then you're like, well, what am I supposed to choose then? Let's not forget that God has given us a brain to use and he's given us free will. So when it comes to decisions like that, I can just see our father standing there and saying, you choose. You cho I've given you a brain to use. I've given you free will. So you choose. And then not looking back on it later. A word that the Holy Spirit spoke to me when I was in the shower a while ago, as I was thinking about these decisions was, Deborah, choose your path and walk in it. This year, the path that I've chosen is to follow God fully. Okay, now walk in it. Walk in it, as in be confident in the decision you made. Don't be there all wish-washy like, uh, uh, what if I went that way? What if da, 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 da? you've chosen this path? Now walk in it. Walk in the path that you've chosen. Again, in Isaiah, where it says, whether you turn to the right or to the left, um, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the path. Now walk in it. Walk in that path. Don't look back. Don't be like, what if I made this choice? Da, 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 da. You didn't make that choice. Now walk confidently in the path that, you, that you've that you chosen. Looking back on decisions like that is like Lot's wife turning into a pillar of salt after she turned back to look back at Sodom and Gomorrah when God told them, don't look back. She looked back. You turn into a pillar of salt because you become stuck, you become salty, you become sad. You cannot go back in time and change things. All you can do right now for the decisions that are to come is to implement these things. Place them next to the Bible. Spend time in prayer. Ask for confirmation. Step out in faith. Have faith. Faith is a substance for things not seen. No wing that our God has his hand right underneath you. He will never let you fall. Our Lord always comes through. When we make decisions for him, look at that story of what happened to those boys. They were thrown into a fiery furnace flames were blazing and what happened they were not harmed there was another in the fire there was another in the fire so they did get thrown into the fire but it did not overtake them they came out they didn't even smell like burned the lord delivered them because god saw their intention at heart they chose to follow him to serve him fully why would he as our heavenly father ever reject that ever let us fall after we choose him so that is what i want to say about decision making today allow god into every part of your life and into your decisions also just that act of seeking him in your decisions he delights in that so much as your father what a proud father he must be so proud of his child he loves you beyond measure he will always be there to help in decisions when you call on him when you wait expectantly wait on the lord be patient don't always step out in haste. Be patient and walk in the path that has been set out before you. Decisions made for him will never, ever, ever, ever go unnoticed. No matter how out of the ordinary they might seem in the world, no matter how silly those decisions might seem to people in the world, we know what we know. When you stand in the truth and the word of God, hey, our Lord asks us that, to do things that don't make sense. That is just what he does. Because in a space where we're standing in things that don't make sense, that's where God's miracle power and his works can come through. Because our God doesn't make sense. Does it make sense for him to part the Red Sea? No. Doesn't make sense to part a sea. Miracles of the Lord don't make sense. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> but yeah, that's it today for this Faith Talks episode. I pray that this has been a blessing for you in your decision making. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is so good good to have you here um have a blessed week coming up and i will be back again very very soon but maybe this time that's what i get for wanting to